Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is January 11th. This is the EU-US edition. Uh, and today we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Varachton. Uh, Mark's not joining us today. There are some other things going on. And, and if anyone does show up, um, we'll welcome them in uh, on the agenda. Uh, so we've got the 2023 recap blog posts that we're working on, contributor spotlight updates, next LTS release, uh, Jenkins Contributor Summit, Google Summer Code 2024 prep, the version documentation site, integrating Docker Compose into the Jenkins documentation, uh, and the sponsor the sponsor attribution page that Basil's been working on. Uh, and then the last item on the list is something that came up earlier in the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach meeting, uh, updating the Twitter link at the bottom of Jenkins.io to be something for X. Um, is there anything else that we want to throw on the agenda, Bruno? Uh, anything that from uh, you want to make sure is on? Okay. Yep. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, so starting off, so the 2023 recap blog post is being compiled now by the SIG leaders. Um, we have a, a document that we're all contributing to. So uh, the goal is to have that published by January 15th. Um, it's just a matter of having everyone put their uh, two cents in there, making sure they recap things uh, and submitting it. Once we get that, that pull request, we're pretty much good to go. Um, but yeah, people have to put that in for their updates in there first before we can submit that pull request. So in due time. Uh, for the contributor spotlight, Chris Stern's spotlight was published yesterday. Uh, again, I want to just share a really uh, sincere and deep thanks to Chris for all of their work on uh, the Jenkins project over the last couple of years and helping getting the contributor spotlight page itself up and running like this. Um, yeah, just really, really appreciative of, of everything Chris does on a constant basis. Uh, heavily involved in the project in so many different ways that I don't even want to start to try and list right now because yeah, there's always many. Um, but yeah, just deep, deep appreciation and thanks to Chris for all of their work. Um, I think it's great that we get to spotlight Chris for the first person of 2024. Uh, that's really exciting. And uh, we did this intentionally to give um, Chris the proper spotlight during towards the end of the year. Uh, people are on holidays, works are you know slowing down. Uh, there's not as much traffic or visibility. We wanted to have Chris get that visibility that they deserve. So, uh, yeah. And uh, and then Uli Hafner is going to be the next one after that. So he'll be published later this month. Uh, and then we've got plenty lined up for the next couple months as well. Uh, there has been ongoing discussion as well about the Jenkins text logo navigation. Uh, so just to quickly summarize what's going on, uh, depending on what uh, part of Jenkins.io you're in, uh, this Jenkins text logo up here in the corner takes you to the root of the pay, of the URL. Uh, so for instance, if we're on the blog and we click Jenkins, uh, it takes Jenkins.io homepage. However, if we're in the contributor spotlight, uh, we're going to go to Chris's spotlight page. We'll click the Jenkins text logo and we're at the root of contributors.jenkins.io. Uh, same thing goes for plugins.jenkins.io. Uh, and stories.jenkins.io, you are brought to the root of the URL you're on. So uh, there's been some discussion about whether or not that should change. Uh, for the most part, I think a lot of people are in agreement that having it do the root uh, function is, is what makes sense. Um, and based on what I was reading from Gavin's previous comments, uh, changing it to be specific in that way uh, is a lot more work involved and it's a little bit more uh, complicated than just simply having it go root. Um, so it may be a change that could be made, uh, but this is fairly consistent with other projects and other sites as well. Um, so frankly, I think it makes sense to leave it as the root that way people aren't navigating away from the plugin site if they wanna remain on the plugin site. Uh, if they click that, they're brought back to plugins. So yeah, it, it could be a little bit more interruptive or annoying than anything else, but yeah. Um, if you have any strong thoughts one way or another, feelings, uh, appreciation, or otherwise, please feel free to comment in the poll request. This discussion is ongoing. It's not gonna happen today or uh, right this moment. So there's plenty of time. Uh, next up, so um, the next LTS release is happening on January 24th. That's going to be for uh, version 2.426.3. Uh, the release candidate was uh, made available yesterday via the developer's mailing list. So that's linked here in the agenda. Uh, you can grab that there, test out, 
And uh, the change log and upgrade guide has already been submitted and approved by Mark. So um, that's been added here. This is a link to the release checklist. This is something that we have for every release, the release lead in this case, Chris Stern, once again, thank you. Uh, put this together and uh, this keeps track of where we're at for the release. So uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, you can always check those out. Again, the checklist is a great place to have a discussion. Uh, and I'll be checking to make sure that the change log and upgrade guide are correct uh, for the next week or two just before the release. Uh, that way, if there are any surprise additions or extra things that need to be added, I can make those changes. Uh, the Jenkins Contributors Summit is going to be happening on February 2nd, 2024. So that's the day before the FOSDEM conference starts. Uh, the John Mark Missen has created a blog post for the Contributor Summit outlining key information, dates, times, et cetera, planned agendas. Um, and we'll have a lot more at the Contributor Summit itself. Um, but for the time being, we've got uh, over 20 people confirming that they're going to be attending. Uh, we've got four out of five members of the board that are going to be attending and all but one officer at this point in time. Uh, Tim Jacome is still uh, trying to determine whether or not he'll be able to get funding to come out for the conference. Um, but if not, we'll have uh, almost a full house, which is really exciting. Um, since I started with uh, working in the Jenkins project a couple of years ago, I haven't met anyone in person. So this will be a really exciting time. Uh, I'm also looking forward to meeting people that we work with on a regular basis that are across the world. I have no way of uh, meeting them. So yeah, this is gonna be really fun and exciting. And the Contributor Summit's a really cool uh, opportunity to get insight into what Jenkins is looking towards for 2024 and beyond, uh, what kind of projects we're working on, what we have down in the pipeline, uh, pun not intended, but we'll go with it. And uh, yeah, we have a meetup page for the event. So you can also share your intent to join us there. Uh, Jean-Marc is organizing the agenda on the community site. So we have that. Uh, and we have a few things that we're looking at in terms of presentation and discussions to have during that. Um, really excited about that. Again, we'll have more information uh, a little bit closer to the event, but to really get everything, you want to be there in person or uh, yeah, there's online recordings after the fact that too. But um, yeah, really exciting and uh, really looking forward to the summit. Uh, for Google Summer of Code 2024, so the preparation has started. Uh, we've got 10 mentors that have volunteered so far. We can always use more. It's always nice to have. Uh, there was a call for mentors blog post that was actually created and published. So um, we have the interest. It's great to see. Uh, we do need some more mentors, but um, you know that that is a similar experience as to what has happened in previous years. So this is not unheard of. Um, we just want to make sure that we have given the ample opportunity and availability to anyone who wants to join up. Uh, so um, good news is the uh, Jenkins Google Summer of Code Gitter channel or uh, IRC channel uh, has seen a lot of activity, a lot of discussion. Thanks to Chris Vandy for everyone uh, for taking the time to respond to people and share how to get involved with this. Um, I think I saw even earlier today, uh, Chris was recommending, or uh, yeah, even previous uh, GSOC members uh, like Akash, uh, helping to explain like what the expectations are, when things are happening. Um, so really, really, really just amazing participation and, and collaboration with everyone um, for the GSOC next, this coming year, or this year actually, sorry. Um, so yeah. Uh, more mentors are always appreciated. We're still looking for more. Uh, if you have interest in any of the ideas, they are all listed on the Project Ideas page. Um, yeah, check in, reach out, ask. Um, if you're curious, if you have even remote interest, check them out, follow up, read a little bit more. Um, if I'm not mistaken, each project has the uh, planned mentors or leaders like uh, tied to them at this point in time. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but um, yeah, the project ideas page has everything listed uh, and you can find out more there. And so these are some of, these are some of the projects right now that we're looking at. Um, and then you'll notice stuff like alternative Jenkins IO build tools or something uh, that we just finished up or are in the process of finishing up now, um, which also leads into our next topic. So the version documentation for Jenkins.io is 
uh, a result of the 2023 Google Summer of Code. Uh, it's something that uh, both Chris Stern and Vandi Singh have been working on for uh, the last nine months or so. And it's at a point where it's ready to, you know, we're getting ready to push it live and have it be part of uh, the Jenkins infrastructure. Uh, it's got an issue already created in infra. So uh, we're that far into this already. Um, we wanna, at this point, we wanna make sure that the version doc site is reviewed. Uh, any issues are called out and uh, noted now, as opposed to later. And uh, with this month of January being a bit busier for everyone, um, lost some prep for some of for some of us exams exams for Vandit. Uh, this is a great 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 time to go through and do that review and do that in depth uh, checking of links and making sure content is where it needs to be and everything like that. Uh, that that way they'll be able to come back and take a look, do that, take care of those issues, anything that might need to be. Um, updated, resolved, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they'll have the ability to do that and the bandwidth for that more importantly after January. Um, yeah, uh, and Vandi was uh, here last week. He was able to share. Um, they've got the change log and blogs already done. Uh, they have a couple other things to still do, upgrade guides, security advisories. Um, but for the most part, the site itself is good to go. Uh, I've gone through and did a base review of it. A lot of the stuff I found have already has already been resolved. Um, and it seems like there's a lot more uh, the transition from Antora or the transition from uh, Ostrock to Antora than anything actually being incorrect or wrong necessarily. So um, super, super encouraging. And uh, once again, immense thanks to Chris and Bobby for their, all their work on that. Next up on the agenda, so um, integrating Docker Compose into the Jenkins documentation. This is something that Bruno has been working on. Uh, and this is also uh, the kind of the last stages and results of another Google Summer of Code project that we've been, uh, that's been getting done. Um, so this is the fruits of that, all that labor. Fantastic to see. Um, I've been looking at the Maven one. I haven't gotten to the Python one just yet, um, but, uh, everything looks great so far. I haven't run into any issues or anything that's inherently like breaking or wrong or bad. So um, things are going well there. Uh, Bruno, would you like to speak to anything or share anything about these uh, pull requests or like what you've been uh, doing with this? Yeah, not so much uh, lately, in fact, because uh, yes, it still needs uh, polishing and uh, maybe a thorough review. Uh, the first one about Maven is supposed to work. It works. Yeah, it does work, uh, I have to say. Uh, the Python one, it's maybe too early because I'd like the Maven one to be merged before uh, reviewing myself what I've done with the Python one. And I also have some modifications to make to the Python. So please don't lose your time uh, reviewing this one. It's not ready yet. It's still in draft, if I'm not mistaken. Um, as for the Maven one, I don't know. Uh, we could um, merge it as is if people have a think uh, it's usable, um, but it could also be refinished. So it could still stay uh, this way for a few more weeks that with no hurry. Uh, from time to time, I see people asking um, in community Jenkins IO or in Gitter, how could I start with Docker um, and Maven or sometimes just with Docker and Jenkins? How should I do? So I um, give them the link to the actual preview of this tutorial, but I never ever get any feedback. So I don't know if that works for them. So they're happy and they won't uh, give us any feedback or maybe they, <laughs> they do something else. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, just to say, uh, no hurry. Uh, it will be, it will see a final review when it will see a final review. Uh, mm -hmm. It's yeah, almost ready to merge. Um, so feel free to do it if you think it's ready uh, and I'm okay mm -hmm. if we still wait until after FOSDEM uh, to make a thorough review, maybe together or something. So uh, I will pull back the curtain a little bit on this one since uh, since you mentioned FOSDEM. Uh, so my my goal is to have these, everything, these merged before FOSDEM. Uh, oh, okay. I would love to actually, um, so I'll share this a little bit now, but uh, part of what, I'll, what we'll be talking about during FOSDEM, during the Contributor Summit is what we're looking at in the future for Jenkins. Um, mm -hmm. 
the version doc site is definitely going to be part of my conversation as well as this, uh, the Docker Compose. These are two Google Summer of Code projects that we've seen to completion that are improving oh. the website and documentation in various ways. I want to make sure they're highlighted as such. Um, so yeah, so my so Bruno, my goal is to have these reviewed and merged before Faustum, uh, a little okay, bit before. So I definitely we have to screw a few screws uh, next week, you know, to, <laughs> to do some TLC <laughs> on uh, at least the Maven one. So I okay um, next week I'll work on these two um, pull requests. Thank you for letting me know, <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, yeah, and and if we and, and honestly, um, Bruno, if the Python one doesn't get done before Fossum, we don't have to rush this. It's not it could. It's not going to uh, make or break anything in that sense. Uh, the Maven one's at a really good point, and I, it's gotten a lot of review already. I just, uh, what I want to do at this point is just really fine tooth comb, like grammar punctuation, like this is the really oh, small yes. stuff. <laughs> That's really where I'm at with it. The instructions are all correct. I'm not worried about that part of it. Okay. Um, so that's really like where I'm at with that. I think the Maven one is going to be relatively easy to merge at this point. Um, but again, everyone's very busy with a lot of stuff. The costume's <laughs> coming up. We're all going to be there. Uh, I don't want to overload anyone or myself. So Maven will definitely plan on Python will, will hopefully get to, but if it comes down to it, that it's just a little bit too much, we'll worry about it after the fact. Um, but I want, I want to at least have the Maven one in there because it's a great story and Docker composes uh, the, the future of Jenkins. We're, that's what the point of Google summer of code is. So yeah, I think we should include it. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, of course. So thank you very much, Bruno. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, so now that I've given all my secrets up, uh, next up on the list is the sponsor attribute page. So um, this was sparked by a, a request from our friends at JFrog asking to be attributed to the downloads page, uh, which that makes sense. However, JFrog contributes a little bit more than just downloads. So um, what this has now uh, kind of evolved into is having a sponsor page. Um, it's a great idea. Uh, right now, the Jenkins website uh, just has um, a handful of logos at the bottom talking about our uh, support and our uh, sponsors. Um, we just actually removed Red Hat because they're no longer part of the CD foundation. Uh, so I, I created a pull request to remove them from here. That got approved and taken care of. So um, that part's up to date. But uh, we have more sponsors and partnerships and collaborations, whatever it, the actual term is called in this, but um, Basil Crow has taken it upon himself to make a uh, request uh, sponsor page. Uh, so we have the pull request here where uh, Mark and Basil have been talking about it. Uh, we've talked about the idea of using the kind of Olympic gold medal and silver medal, bronze medal sort of uh, tiers where anchor is going to be, you know, the utmost highest level. Um, and then we have mirrors, which are different. They're inherently different terms of different kinds of support. Um, so they would be in a class all their own. So this is being, this is still a draft, uh, still plenty of times to converse, discuss if there's something that you like better than that, or if there's something about, you know, the suggestion or uh, even the, the, the idea of this, if you have any concerns or, you know, want to share, this is here, please feel free to add to the discussion. Um, but this is something that we um, are actively looking at and it has been changing a little bit due to uh, the way some of the sponsorships have shaken out uh, for this year. Um, for instance, Oracle is not donating and DigitalOcean has donated for both 2023 and 2024. So um, they should have visibility here as well. So um, the sponsors page is gonna correct and address a lot of that to make sure that it's presented and everyone gets their spotlight, so to speak. Uh, and then the last thing that I had on the agenda for today, uh, so this was something that, again, was brought up in the advocacy and outreach meeting earlier. Uh, but uh, right now we have Twitter listed here under the community. Uh, the issue with this is Twitter is now X as of July. Uh, so we were discussing wh what this should be here or how this should be uh, displayed. Uh, I looked at a bunch of other projects and most of them are still listing it as Twitter on the page itself, or if they're using the logos and not uh, necessarily providing a direct link, 
Uh, they're using the bird logo, the old Twitter bird logo. Uh, so for Red Hat, for instance, um, and no, they're not sponsoring us, but yeah, there's their Twitter logo there. Uh, for, uh, where is it? Apache Tomcat, they're still uh, listing out Twitter here under media. Uh, and something that Mark brought up earlier is there are other things called X that they that might be more familiar to the people using Jenkins. Uh, so just having it be X is probably not the call here. Um, but from what I've found, everyone still seems to be using Twitter or the previous logo. Uh, the only ones that I've found are not using the Twitter wording are uh, Spring and the CD Foundation themselves. However, they're specifically using the X logo uh, instead of a text version. So uh, they have the updated Twitter uh, X logo here. Same with, again, the CD Foundation. Um, they have the X logo up at the top and the bottom of their page. Uh, however, I also found CD Foundation is still writing out Twitter uh, for stuff like personal yeah. links. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a weird area. I don't know that changing it to X is the right call. I don't think it is. However, having it be something like X slash Twitter might make more sense. Um, with all these other projects not doing that, I'm hesitant to make that change. Um, and it's more just like JFrog is still using the Twitter bird um, down here. GitHub is still using the Twitter bird. AWS is still using the, using the Twitter bird. Like bigger names are still yeah. using the pre-existing naming conventions and logo. I don't like from a branding perspective, it's not the same. It's not going to be as easily recognizable. The name's not the same. So people are going to say, what is X? But all that being said, uh, I don't know that it's necessarily worth changing at this point in time. Mm -hmm. It could very easily change back sooner than later as well. I don't know. And that's nothing to say ownership or anything like that, but you know, if they decide to later change back, then we're just changing back to what they were as well. Um, maybe we wait it out and see what happens, but I'm, I would, I I would rub really... my popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bruno, how, like any thoughts or feelings on this one way or the other? Uh, I'm interested to, I I'm feel. part of the older people, you know, I've been knowing Twitter since the very beginning. And so Twitter isn't X yet in my head. It doesn't click, you know, even when I type in a new browser somewhere, I never type x.com. It's always Twitter, even if it takes more keystrokes. So, sorry, x doesn't make it for me. And as for Mark, it remembers me of x11 and x in Unix, AI yeah. and so on, to so x of Unix and whatever. So, no, it doesn't click with me, but I'm not representative um, of anyone except old, hairless people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I know Twitter as Twitter as well. Um, and frankly, like my biggest thing is they're still using Twitter in the URL. So. Oh, really? I, like okay. at that point, is it like, yes, it's branded differently, but they haven't revamped entirely or they haven't completely shut down this idea of Twitter. I, I don't think they can because it, familiarity goes along. Does it way. even exist? Yeah, I, I think it was existing at one time. X.com. They bought it. Really? so they bought it yeah they they bought it and they yeah so there's it's a very gray area for me right <laughs> now in terms of what the best course of action would be just because the branding isn't necessarily there is x correct technically yes but if you say did you see my x post no one's gonna really necessarily know what you're talking about if you say did you see that tweet or that twitter post or something like that's very recognizable immediately so there's for me there's more value in keeping it twitter at this point in time the x is such a miss like like just a void of what is that um and you know we're talking about it in this context so we know specifically what it's referring to but yeah uh, yeah so do we already have synonyms for tweet and tweeps or not yet with x 
uh, from what I was reading, uh, it seems like it's post, which oh. is a very, again, general thing. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's missing out on what it already had because of this change. And they haven't necessarily fine tuned it to a point where there's like name or brand recognition as well. So it's mm. very, very nebulous and, um, X just doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. I'm not going to rush to change that based on what I saw with other projects, though. I'm probably going to take this back and check in with the advocacy and outreach group, see what they think about it, talk with Mark, talk with a few other people, see what mm -hmm. they say. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me to update it when no one else really is as well. Um, not to say like I'd go jump off the bridge if everyone else was doing it, but in this case, I think there's, I think there's something to be said for the fact that Google open source, Red Hat, Django, Ansible, Apache, Tomcat, like all of these names are still using Twitter and their in their page and their in their websites. Um, so I'm okay leaving it with that. If there's a major seismic shift tomorrow and everyone decides to use the X and label it as X and Twitter is never used again. Fine. I'll go, I'll jump through that hoop right then and there and do it. But yeah, not convinced anyway. So, uh, and look at that. I did all of that without getting into my feelings towards Twitter as a whole. Hey, look at me. Uh, sorry. Anyway, um, that concludes the agenda that I had for today. Bruno, anything else you want to talk about to throw out there or, um, add on oh, before we you, wrap Kevin. up okay, nothing from cool. my side thank you oh, okay uh so then i'll go ahead and wrap up the the recording in just a moment uh it'll be available 24 to 48 hours as always there'll be a community forum posting for it uh and welcome to 2024 2024 thanks again as always take care stay safe until next time uh and yeah we'll see you next week bye now bye-bye